Hello everybody, Gunstock Michael here. I shot over two hours of footage yesterday for a 15 minute clip to share with you and uh, found out just a bit ago when I went to process it that I guess I was turning the camera off when I thought I was turning it on and so I filmed a couple hours of blackness which was in silence because <laughs> I was filming when I wasn't actually acting. In any case, uh, I'm going to go over now what I tried to do yesterday, but because you're looking at a now nicely stained stock, let's take a look at that first. Looking in the camera's viewfinder, it looks like it's picking it up, uh, looking, well let me tilt this up for you a little bit. Uh, the viewfinder is looking lighter than it actually is, so I'll be curious to see how it looks on the computer but it actually is a pretty good dark color not as dark as it was from the factory because that finish had aged and it was almost like paint you couldn't even see the grain of the wood through it or you know just barely so I think this is going to look really nice it's been two coats of stain after this dries I might try a third and see if it takes a little bit more stain uh, the stain takes a long time to dry I'll put it in front of the wood stove tonight uh, some of the thoughts that I had for you yesterday that didn't make it uh, into the camera is as I was sanding the previous attempt at finish off, I was building up corns. And in the previous video I had talked about uh, hoping that I could sand only with 320 to accomplish the redo job so that I wouldn't add any sanding scratches. Uh, that turned out not to work for two good reasons. One, um, built up corns like crazy. You may know this uh, by a different term. I, I know them as corns. It's basically the finished balls up in the sandpaper. With coarser grits of sandpaper I use a steel brush and, uh, and work them out of there so that you can keep using the sandpaper for a little bit. With finer grade as soon as it plugs up it's like one or two swipes you get that. You move to another spot one or two swipes, another spot one or two swipes until the paper's full and uh, that was just going to take forever with 320 so I did did it with 220 sanded like crazy then 320 and I can't see the 220 scratches because it's blonde wood but just sand like crazy and hope for the best then I put the first coat of oil uh, not oil uh, stain on today and that allowed me to see I think it was in here a whole bunch of original deans and dents and scratches uh, from the abuse the stock has seen over the years, not from my sanding. Uh, I just couldn't see them. Uh, but they stood out to me, so I re-sanded this area. It's, it's going to need to be uh, dressed with a little more stings. It's still a bit lighter than the rest. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. But got rid of most of those scratches, and I see a couple more right here that are going across. Um, there's a couple over here, so I'm going to hit these another time or two. But I'm going to have to say uh, enough is enough fairly early on because it's going to be really challenging. Can't take this through the steps I normally do with proper dark walnut that doesn't need to be stained. Because with that, you can keep oiling and sanding and oiling and sanding and oiling and sanding. And at each level of sanding grit, you'll find scratches from the previous grit or even further back as the uh, finish builds up and begins to be more like a mirror and really show the tiny imperfections. <clears throat> but here, whatever tiny imperfections there are, or even gross ones, um, I'm not going to be able to go back and address them once oil starts going on. So... Uh, I'm going to take care of these couple more little spots I saw. Oh yeah, here. That little spot and that one. But pretty much we are heading down the path towards oil and I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, on uh, Last time there were a bunch of deep sanding scratches here uh, that I took care of and I think I just misspoke a minute ago. These were not sanding scratches here and neither is this little spot up here. This is just from a, abuse over the years. So here's the cheek piece. It is also looking nice. It actually has one little line of figure in it. So that's nice. There's something, a little bit of character in the wood. Very little, but something. Which further tells me this may very well be some kind of very light uh, wood walnut. I don't know what it is. I can see here now that my eyes have been drawn to this little line of figure. It showed up in the, in the camera. 
So that's how I really noticed it. And I see there's like a little knot or something there that threw that figure. In fact, it goes all the way across here. And then there's a little knot here, which maybe I should have filled an epoxy fill on it. It's really tiny. I decided not to. I think uh, we've done enough on this already. Um, I could just feel it with my fingernail a little bit, but it's, it's not a big deal. So let's see. We talked about building up corns. I ended up using 220. Even that built up corns like that. But my attitude with sandpaper is, use it up. Uh, so maybe it costs 40 or 50 bucks on a stock to go through all the sandpaper that's required. But would you rather do that or spend an extra week working with wore out paper or clogged paper? And I'll show you a trick I do with these uh, inexpensive block sanders from Harbor Freight. One thing I do is these... Uh, release levers uh, like to be really loose and will fall down so uh, and scratch the work. So I just ball up some uh, tape on them so they can't fall down and it makes them sticky. And then I suppose you could take the time to cut your sandpaper into thirds nice and neat, use a straight edge, I don't know how you would do it. Here's what I do. I just uh, stick it on the block sander like that and then I just use scissors and chop it off. Just be fast about it because you're going to go through a lot of paper. Uh, let's see, I think I should have had notes. Oh, I reworked the um, stip lane. You may recall from the last video that there was a section here where the stippled part of the stock was proud of the flat part. So when I sanded the flat part, which I had to do to take care of this uh, missing wood, which by the way, came out great. Um, it sanded a little bit of an area of the stip lane. And the stip lane, maybe it's sandblasting. I, I kind of think it is sandblasted. I don't have a sandblaster. Not sure I could mask this off to be able to pull it off like the factory did anyway. So I had showed you how I, I dulled a, uh, a deck screw and that made some nice but somewhat slightly large dents compared to see these aren't really stippled dents if it's sandblasted and I think it is so they're they're kind of small uh, but then today I, I thought I would rework that area and blur those larger dents with uh, this needle file had has kind of a uh, not super pointy point and I thought oh, that might be a nice tool to do so I reworked this area and blurred it, blurred the previous dents out a little bit, hit it with a little bit of 120 to knock the edges down. Yeah, it doesn't look like the sandblasting, but it's not bad. If you look close, it's not the same, but it definitely passes the three foot away test. And the main thing I wanted to do is with that having been sanded, the eye would have been drawn to it. And now with it roughed up a little bit, even though it doesn't perfectly match, but it's not going to stand out to the eye this way. So I think it's a good solution for that. So a couple more coats of stain and then oil like crazy and get it in a box. Thank you all for watching. Did that in one take. Didn't have to take two hours at it and I actually pushed play in the correct sequence. I am Michael. I make gun stocks and various other things. I look forward to sharing with you, sharing with you if I ever get the time. Uh, but if you find this entertaining or useful, please think of hitting the thumbs up button, comment down below. Oh, but those comments are going to go away, so because uh, I, I got to make a change on the channel. And then what's the other thing we always ask people to do? Subscribe and share. Thanks very much. Uh, you'll see me soon. Bye.